Hi Desiree. Hope y'all are healthy and feeling good. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you here next week. So we'll just dive right in. Um, the first thing I actually want to go over is we're starting to maybe get thinking about if we want to do the June recital and what pieces we would like to perform. So we want to kind of start being aware of that a few weeks out, right? That gives us three to four weeks to really get comfortable with whatever we want to perform and have a lot of time to be in performance mindset instead of learning mindset or just playing practicing mindset, right? It's, it's a very different approach. So that way, when we get to the performance, we feel super comfortable and confident and everything goes the best that it possibly can. So we're in kind of a unique spot right now because we have so many new things that we've been working on, um, except for Hannon, <laughs> which as fun as it is to play Hannon, we probably, um, you know, tend to want to avoid that for a public performance. Um, so we're in kind of a strange place because we don't really have something new that is performance ready since the last performance, right? So I think what would be maybe helpful for us in this particular situation would actually to be considering older pieces that we've kind of moved on from. Stuff from our review list, like maybe either Sailing or the Tarantella, both pieces that you did super well and that would be pretty easy to review at this point. Plus, at this point, we have basically a month, right? So it would be um, no problem at all to, to have those feeling ready and prepared by the time we get to the June recital. Of course, you could just pick one if you'd rather you know, only have one piece. Um, but I think both of those would maybe be a good option to consider. So you can kind of start thinking about that. We'll, we'll touch base on that again next week. But um, we definitely want to be thinking about it now. So that way we can kind of make a decision and have plenty of time to really get those feeling performance ready. Um, Over the Rainbow was something that I thought maybe we might consider. But again, we're very much still in the learning phase. Even if we did a little bit more of the piece at this point and kept it how we were working on it for this week with just the melody in right hand and then the bass notes in the left hand, um, I, I, I don't know. I think you would be perfectly fine to perform it that way. I don't know if it would be setting you up the best because we're still very much in the learning phase. So if that sounds more interesting to you or is something you would prefer to do rather than reviewing an old piece, we can certainly go over that next week and see if we can make that a, a, a good option. Um, but it really is, is kind of up to you. I just want to make sure that you are set up the best possible to succeed in each performance. So that's kind of where that stands. Be thinking about it and we'll talk about it more on Tuesday next week. So our theory, I'm going to pull that up here. We did such an awesome job on the transposition. Transposing is not very easy for a lot of people to get the hang of and you just did a beautiful job. Plus all of your um, notes are so pretty. <laughs> you did such a nice job there with the actual notation, which is another thing we're, we're practicing with doing this type of exercise, right? Um, to make sure that if you do need to notate something, you know, number one, what to do, and number two, you know how to make it legible so that people can actually read what you wrote, right? Um, or even so that you can remember what, <laughs> what notes you wanted <laughs> in each section. So first example was number three, and we were transposing from A minor to C minor. Now it's interesting here, you did a fabulous job of getting all of your notes down and all of your notes are correct. There's a couple places where we actually went the opposite direction for the note. So this will be most helpful if you have your book open in front of you because I'm gonna talk through some specific measures and things. So on exercise number three, we're starting off strong. And then if you look at measure number two, we start with the F, right, which is correct, and then we go to two Ds. Now, on the original example in A minor, that, when we started on the first note, they are actually skipping down a third, right? So they're going from D down to B, and then another B there, right? Now, to transpose to C minor, you have the right notes. We would want an F and then two Ds. Those are all correct. However, if you notice on your transposed measure, your Ds jump up. So they're now moving up a sixth instead of down a third. Again, we have all the right letter names, but the interval has changed. Instead of going down to the Ds, 
we made them go up. So what that actually would do is make your melody sound a little bit different, right? Instead of, let's see. Right, which is what we would expect it to sound like if we're copying the original melody. If we change that, then we end up with this. totally sounds different there, right? Again, it's the same letter, but we're changing the interval direction by going up instead of going down. So that's the only real thing that we wanna keep in mind the next time we work on transposing. Again, your letter names, totally perfect. Notation, fantastic. Um, and that's a really little thing because I think you were really just focused on the letter names, right? So the, the big thing to remember there is we're trying to make the piece sound the same, just a little bit higher or lower than the original key that it was in. So we wanna make sure all of our interval distances are moving in the same directions as well. We see that again on the third measure, we would just want those Ds at the beginning and end of that measure to come down the octave so that the note distances look the same as in the original example. And then same thing on measure four in the right hand with the last note. We'd want that C to be going back down to middle C instead of going up to C on treble clef staff. Left hand, again, perfect on the notes. Your whole notes look fantastic. We just want those G's in measure two and three to go up, right, to the top space of bass clef instead of the bottom line. So that that way we're still moving up a fifth and then holding and then down a fifth, like in the original example, okay? Um, same thing on exercise number four. This was basically almost perfect. The only place that we ran into that interval um, change was, was it here? Yeah, I think it was only in the very last measure for your left hand. So we put the B flat way down low on the staff instead of sitting in the lazy B spot on top of the staff. Um, so we would just want that to be up the octave and then we would be totally perfect. Um, and then your right hand there, it looks like we ended in the fourth measure with a quarter note. We would just wanna make that a half note so we have the right number of beats in that measure and then we're totally good. Like I said, you did a fantastic job. This is usually a very, very challenging thing to feel good at and to really understand well and it looks like you just did a, a great job with it so very little idea to bring into the next time we work on it and then we'll be good to go um, you actually won't have any new homework for this week the next pages are working on ear training so that's something that we will actually go over together uh, in your lesson you won't have anything to do at home or anything to fill in we'll We'll take a little bit of our lesson time to work on different ear training practice examples. Same idea, right? It's just a different skill that we're practicing in a, a new way by using the theory book to work on it. Um, and then that means that we won't actually have any homework for a couple weeks, I believe. So let me make sure I've got that on my end here too. Okay, perfect. So then let's go on. Um, we had somewhere over the rainbow, which is looking awesome. You did a great job with doing the bass, ba oh my goodness, the, the bass notes in the left hand. <laughs> there we go. Kept wanting to say bass clef. Um, it is bass clef, but it, we don't see it on the page. Anyway, um, and then the melody in the right hand. First four measures are looking awesome. So what we're gonna do this week is go on a little bit. We're gonna go all the way through the first ending. So you'll continue working on the melody for the right hand. This will cover, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. And we'll stop right there at the repeat sign at the end of the first ending. Um, and then your left hand, let's again, just stick right now with these bass notes. I think that's um, gonna be more of where we wanna keep our focus with this song, at least for right now, is, is just getting comfortable with both hands together with the bass notes. And then if we wanna add a little bit more later, we can, okay? So your, your left hand, um, has a couple of new notes in here. So I'll just kind of go through what you'll play for each one. Obviously for your F chords in measure five, you'll just play an F. When you get to measure six, it's a little interesting. We've got a C slash G here. So what this means for your left hand is you're gonna ignore the C since we're just doing bass notes 
and you're gonna just play a G there, okay? This would actually be a C chord in second inversion. So the first letter tells you the chord that you're playing, and then we have the slash and then the second letter, and that tells you which note it should be the lowest or which note is in the bass. And so if a G is in the bass, then we would have G as the bottom note of a C chord but we're only doing our bass note for right now. So that's why you'll just play the G there and ignore the C for right now. Then you have an A7, so of course we would just switch to an A. The next measure, this is starting the third line, you have a couple of different D chords here. You'll just again stick with a, a plain D key in the left hand for right now, a very quick G note for the G7 chord. And then we get to the first ending measure and you'll start with C and then switch to D and G. And that will be changes all by itself because the right hand just has a whole note for the melody there. All right, so we will take a look at that. We'll just keep it one hand at a time as we get used to the new parts. And then we will touch base on that together next week. And then King William's March. Oh, I don't need to pull it up there. Um, is looking very good. I think in the last video we had talked about um, trying out just the right hand with the metronome at 80 beats per minute, right? That was the speed that we had set. So I think I just got a recording of, of hands together, which again is looking great for that first line. I do definitely want us, if you haven't already, to try this week playing just the right hand with the metronome set to 80. So again, to kind of give you an idea, Here's the metronome at 80, which means your right hand part would be about this fast. Okay, so we're just starting to try and get comfortable. Oh, no, turn off, turn off, there we go. Um, get comfortable with the right hand at a little bit of a faster speed, but we don't want to worry about both hands together yet, just the right hand there, okay? Speaking of hands together, though, I think we are looking great with the second line. I think we can probably start trying to work on putting that hands together. Again, the nice thing is it starts very familiar, right? We have seen the first couple of measures before in the first line. When we get to measures, uh, let's see, that's seven and eight, where the right hand starts to get a little bit fancier, that's where we definitely want to keep it slow, make sure that everything is, is coordinating in the right places with your hands doing the right things together. The nice thing is we get to measure eight. We've got this fancy trill in the right hand. We just have to start it with the left hand note and then you get to do all the fancy stuff just worrying about the right hand. We don't have to line that up with anything in the left hand. Left hand just holds out the A, and then you'll end on Ds together, right? So that's here, okay? Fancy, 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 but we just start it with the A in the left hand, and then we have our first D here just again by itself for right hand, then we end on Ds together for that part, okay? So we'll start giving that a try, just see how it goes this week. And then if you run into any problems with it, we will um, take a look together next time. But great job fixing the F sharps in the left hand. That is so much better. Hopefully it sounds a little bit better to you when you play it too. Uh, that looks great. So very nice from last time. And I think that's it. So right hand by itself, first line with the metronome at 80 beats per minute. And that'll be for your quarter note. So each time you hear a click, that's when your next quarter note would be happening, right? Or your quarter note pulse. And then line two, we'll start working on that hands together as well. Very nice. Okay, last thing is Hannon, which is looking fabulous. Great job putting the descending pattern hands together and staying centrally located. I know sometimes that's kind of a weird thing to include in your practice or be thinking about, but you did a very nice job in the recording that you sent. So for Hannon this week, what we're actually going to do is we'll we'll start bringing in, I know it's been a while since we even worked on this before this particular exercise, but we're going to start trying out different things with our different Hannon exercises once we've got the general pattern down, okay? So for this week, what I'd like you to try is playing this exercise with your hands two octaves apart instead of just one octave apart. So your left hand will start in exactly the same place as normal, but your right hand is now going to start on middle C 
instead of on the C below middle C, right? So your right hand will just be starting one octave higher than normal. You'll still play the whole exercise as normal, two octaves going up and then coming down. It's just the whole time your right hand is gonna be an octave higher than usual, okay? This can sometimes feel like a much more natural position for your hands and your arms and your body rather than keeping your hands this close together if they're only one octave apart. So we're just gonna give that a try and see how it feels this week, okay? Alrighty, I think that is everything. So again, nice job. Hope you are feeling totally good and healthy and um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.